Hello everybody, this is Max from Woodsman's Finest. Welcome to the first episode in my Grip to Tip Modern Traditional Archery series. Why do I call it Modern Traditional Archery? Well, because I really don't want to step on anybody's toes and this is like the first disclaimer, not even 30 seconds into this video. Um, there's really nothing I want to claim in these videos. All I want to do is show you some bows that I have, go over a couple features. Um, there's going to be more traditional or more simple style. I don't want to call it more or less traditional, more simple style bows. Um, a little bit more teched out bows um, and I don't want to value any of that I don't want to say what's good what's bad whatever I like shooting all of them I just love archery it was my absolute first passion in life um, and I thought you know for whatever reason you might like this even maybe if you can just not go outside right now because of whatever lockdown or the weather is not good or whatever and you can just sit down and watch a couple of movies or like a couple of videos by that um, weird Austrian dude showing up with a couple of bows and shooting them a little bit Maybe someone enjoys that. So I want to kick this off with the absolute first custom bow that I got um, back in, I don't know, 2009, maybe 2008. Um, from the US actually, I think I bought it from Leatherwall Classifieds back then. Um, and it's, bit, it's still in my collection and it's a very interesting, very fast, very special bow. It's discontinued, but I still thought this would be a very nice representative of a certain type of bow um, that you can still find in this type out there um, and maybe it's helpful for someone to make a commitment on a bow that they're kind of wondering about but they never had the opportunity of shooting it because you know it might be available on the web or something like that so this is another reason why I want to do these videos maybe it's easier for you to make a commitment for some type of um, of bow and investment that's a little bit higher usually um, and you just want to kind of see something in hand before you take the plunge and that is absolutely understandable and as you know I love making rep um, representations or presentations rather um, not so much reviews just presentations of um, tools my tools other people's tools and in this case maybe um, just some archery equipment I'm trying to keep these intros not as long um, because folks don't really like that and I understand it I just want to still um, kind of set the stage for what is going on before I'm just hopping into something Before we hopping into shooting and just taking a couple of closer looks at what this actually is um, And what category it kind of belongs to a quick shout out to Tophead, Archery and Arcanos um, I've been shooting Tophead components and points ever since probably 15 years ago when I started into longbow competitions uh, And I've never found any more affordable yet very high value um, components for my arrows and tuning arrows is one of the most important thing if anything you really try to become the arrow in archery rather than the bow so having a great tuning setup with high quality and like very very high endurance is making it so much more fun so shout out to top hat um, and thanks for all the support so as the title says this is um, a grip to tip series this is just my idea of like going over a bow and kind of looking at um, what we're talking about the different features that maybe make up the qualities of a bow so in this case here this is a turkey creek longbow um, the specs are that was actually built in 06 I have had it for a very long time the specs are it's a 60 AMO bow it's 52 at 28 it's a little bit more than what I shoot right now but I have after a lot of form changes and truly trying to shoot with back tension I went from a 29 inch draw down to 27 27 healthy repeatable form inches of draw length. So I might actually pull this to about 50, something like that. Uh, yeah, like I said, it was made by Turkey Creek Boss. Um, that guy is not no longer around, as far as I understand, but he made really, really beautiful bows. And um, something like this might be in shape or form reminiscent of other stuff in the market. So maybe that's just interesting for you um, to just see what it is and what it's comparable to, to what you might actually want to get. So in this case, what I call this um, is a reflex longbow. It's not really a reflex deflex because as you see, and like as we start with the grip, as you see here, um, we have very reflexed limbs, but there's not an awful much of deflex coming out of the riser. So two different things we're talking about is um, limb angles basically out of the riser and then the deflex itself. So a lot of modern reflex deflex longbows like the Thunderchild for example by Big Jim 
which is a very, very old Egyptian angular long body sign, actually. It's about 4,000 years old. They have extreme angles coming out of the riser, so they can build very short bows that can still be drawn out to 30 inches or even further. Now, in this case here, we do not have a very um, extreme limb pad angle coming out of the, the riser. It is nearly neutral, so there is hardly any angle here. Very, very shallow, right? But then we have quite a strong reflex here in the limb. So what that does um, is that it builds a rather straight riser that then has a reflex deflex limb design. Let's just have a look at the riser for a moment because it's simple but gorgeous. Um, and I've definitely chopped around on this quite a lot over the years. Here we go. So this is um, also orange with some coco bolo, some beautiful laminations, just a little bit of plastic liners, um, some coco bolo up front, and then um, a very simple riser design. I have, like I said, chipped and chopped around on this quite a bit over the years, and as you can see, I actually carved this into a more flat back grip with a little bit of a thumb ramp, just in order to get a more repeatable grip, which was my major gripe about this bow. Other than that, the quality is really, really nice, um, and the osage and all the woods in here are simple, but they're definitely very appealing. Now, what as we're going, sorry, as we're going towards the limb tips and here at the fade outs, we see first of all we've got some absolutely gorgeous curly maple in the limbs, and we're starting out around an inch and a half, inch and maybe um, five eighths or something like that, right here at the fade outs and then just like a classic American flat bow if you want to call it design we have an absolutely gorgeous taper all the way out to the limb tips that have the same laminations as the riser but they're tiny and this is one reason why this bow is such a rocket without hardly any hand shock um, and this is a very very fast bow it is a mass weight, very light bow, which makes it a little bit harder to shoot than some of my more modern bows and my three-piece long bows and recurves, of course. But the limb tips are an absolute piece of art. And just to give you a reference, I mean, this is small, nimble, and they have been holding up just fine for the last 15 years. And I've really taken them through a lot. And I'm I'm not really looking out for my stuff. That's one of the major problems. Um, I'm a little bit of a, of a catastrophe when it comes to taking care of my equipment. Now, something that's incredible about this bow, and that's Im making it more of a pity that these are not produced anymore, is the laminations. And I'm just going to bring this in one more time for you to hopefully appreciate. We've got four layers of bamboo that have different thicknesses right here at the fade outs. So we've got um, a thicker layer of bamboo on the back and on the belly of the bow. But then in between, thank you camera for managing this, we've got two thinner layers. And then towards the limb tips, all of these layers actually taper out to become the same thickness. So I think this craftsmanship is one reason why this bow is still alive still going strong after all these years i needed to go with some epoxy over here it's it's absolutely ugly um i've done a lot to this bow that i don't even want to admit i'm stringing it in a way that i'm probably not supposed to do it like um and yeah it has been with me through all kind of climates and stuff that that um it wasn't really conducive to its long life but uh, it was my first and this is why i wanted to show this off today um with its very interesting design now, just another word about what I talk about when I talk about limb pad angles or like limb angles and reflex deflex. So the fade outs being in front of the deepest part of the thre of the grip, the throat of the grip, if you will, means that there is no deflex in this bow. There is actually reflex in that riser. Um, deflex would be measured to go to the furthest point of the fade outs here in the wedge and then how far the throat of the grip is actually towards the belly away from the archer to the front of that. So in this case, we're talking more of, I would say, 
nearly an inch of reflex in the riser. And this is one reason why this thing is storing such an incredible amount of energy, which makes it incredible for everything from hunting all the way to 3D, but it also makes it a little bit harder to shoot because it is easier to, it's easier to torque that type of bow if you don't have any deflex, but rather reflex in the riser. Now, um, like I said, again, my disclaimer, this is just my opinion at this point in time. I might be wrong about a lot of things. My opinion might change over time, but this is how I understand it so far, and there's really no good or bad about all of this. Um, it is just an observation that I wanted to share with y'all. Right, so we are at 18 meters out here right now, and I'm gonna just shoot the bow for you a little bit. Uh, actually, I'm trying to put the camera in different perspectives. Let's see, this is my first video doing this, um, and I'm a little bit nervous about making these videos very nice and fun for you to watch. So just bear with me as I'm trying to get a little bit better from video to video and making it more fun. Um, I'm always happy to hear any feedback from you. If there's any more, like a different perspective, a different angle that you want to see something from, I'm just trying to make this fun for all of us. So if we're talking about shooting, I want to say right off the bat, um, I've been tuning this bow the last couple of days again after not shooting it for pretty much six months, but I thought I wanted to just um, start the series with this bow because it deserves it more than any other in my opinion. Um, I'm shooting axis style, axis diameter arrows. I really like them. They bring in the arrow shaft just a little bit closer to center, especially on a bow like this. As I haven't said it before, this bow is cut to center, but not past center. Um, I'm shooting carbon arrows out of a long bow. Yes, it's, it's, you know, it's what it is. Um, I enjoy mixing and matching. I've shot a lot of legacy aluminum arrows out of this, uh, which I really enjoyed. But these days I have mostly carbons lying around. So if I want to shoot a bow like this, I just grab a couple of carbons and go for it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so I have a wrap on the back and um, a little bit of extra like from tread veins, some some keels that are little, um, some quills that are still there, uh, which is important when you're tuning an arrow, of course, an arrow shaft. And usually you have a wrap or something on the back. Um, you just have to kind of put the same around the same weight on the back here um, in order to to mimic whatever um, your your flesh shaft is going to be because that weight is going to stiffen up the shaft now that bow kind of being meant for hunting i'm going with a very stiff shaft full length which is going to help me a little bit i shoot with an aiming system i unfortunately can't shoot instinctive or or intuitive but for the life of mine um, and i've tried it for a decade and i'm just very happy now using the tip of my arrow for shooting. Now, um, since I have a, a longer shaft here, 31 inches, um, and I wanna shoot a very heavy tip for hunting, um, I need to go with a 350 spine actually. Um, and up front here, so up front here, as always, I'm running top head components. Um, why wouldn't I? Um, so these are axis diameter shafts, as I said, they're five millimeters um, inside diameter. So I'm just using this stainless steel 60 grain um, system. Um, this is just an older bear shaft that I'm just working with. Like I said, there's some weight on the back. Um, so the 60 grain insert outsert, and then I'm using a 250 grain top at point. It's so fun working with them. They have this O ring there, um, and so the point never comes loose. Now, on my actual arrows, let me just grab one here. What I actually do is, first of all, on the back I'm running a wrap. This is why I'm Im in imitating um, my bear shaft um, with a little bit of weight on the back. This is a one stringer wrap that I really like. Um, and the fletchings are actually made by Wild Fletching. A friend of mine, Josh, makes these from natural turkey feathers and they still have the oil content. So when I went hunting to Hungary, I was sitting literally in a torrential downpour and they did not fall down on anything. I'm running a top head collar on the back as well. Um, if I'm building pretty arrows, I might as well protect the knock from all the hits I'm getting when I shoot tighter groups. And then I'm also running a top head protective collar on the front. So this insert outsert here um, with this, this point together makes um, a 315 grain up front setup. Um, flies really, really good out of this. I'm not gonna start talking about FOC and any of these other controversial topics because everybody has their opinion on it anyways. Um, and I have mine and I'm just seeing what works for me and that's that. But it is quite a high FOC, probably 23, 24%. Um, and this insert outsert with the collar is representing actually probably the most economically priced and most forgiving 
um, a more most enduring, most economically priced um, setup for an access shaft on the market. Um, you're out probably two euro for the insert and for the, the collar together, uh, which is not even gonna get you close to whatever other components are on the market. So with the point together, that's like a three euro setup all the way um, up front, and this has been working for me really, really well. So sorry for a little bit of rambling about the arrow, but if you're talking about a bow, um, I think it's also a really good opportunity to set, like go through the arrow setup that I'm running. Um, and this is of course not really transferable onto whatever setup you're shooting, but it actually still might be useful. Me just talking a little bit about, um, you know, the point weights I need to choose when I'm going with a stiffer shaft, you know, what the length is. And just showing off pretty arrows is just something I like doing. I'm really proud of these um, and I'm happy every single time um, I grab them out of the, the quiver or out of the car to take them to the range. So that's a very important thing as well. So let's just have a look at the bear shaft flight. Um, it should be pretty decent. There is fortunately, I have to say, not too much you can tune on a bow like this. Now, um, if this was an ILF setup, and this is going to be something we're going to do in the next video, this is going <laughs> to would be a little bit different. But on a bow like this, literally the only thing you can really do um, is put less or, or more string silencers on, which is going to change the, the speed of the bow a little bit, and then what dynamic spine it needs. Or you can actually go up and down on the brace height ever so slightly, but that's pretty much it as far as tuning. The rest is all the arrow, which is a lot of fun. Um, since I do have top end points from 85 grain in 15 grain chumps pretty much all the way to 250 grains out, I'm just usually changing point weights um, and I never really have to cut arrows since I want to shoot a very long arrow anyways, which gives me a more usable point on. Airship flew perfect, just a little bit of knock high, which was to be expected from the rather heavy point weight. Just another word, I'm shooting a fixed crawl out of my most of my setups. Um, let me just grab the ruler here and give you a good idea. Actually, we are at, I'm going to do it in millimeters a little bit more, um, a little bit more precise. We are at 17.2 centimeters up here at the fade. 17.2 down here which means that we do have a bow that is evenly tillered which means it is meant to be shot three under um, i have a little bit higher knock point and a very small fixed crawl which is totally doable even on a 60 inch bow like this if you keep in mind how your bow is tillered brace height is at six and a half inches which is pretty much perfect for a long bow of this type. Let's give it another one here. Sorry for the talk in the background. Just a public range here. we go this is another two and a half three inch group bear shift flies perfect just a little bit knock high again um which is like i said to be expected with the heavy point weight well these are 19 yards groups um very very happy 
considering I'm not really shooting this bow too often. Alright folks, so this was the first episode from Grip to Tip, um, my little archery series that I want to do. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, another shout out to Tophead, thank you very much for the support, um, always. And um, yeah, it's just so much more fun to shoot with gear that just fits and endures everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not saying this is really um, the be all and all of how these videos gonna be. As you know, I'm always trying to make them better, but I thought it's just a good place to just start um, and see how they turn out and see what you what you like and what you don't like about them. And um, yeah, I hope it gave you a little bit of an impression about these type of reflex longbows. Um, and I hope you got a little bit of a, an um, idea of what ma makes them up. Um, and what might be uh, you what you're looking into if you're seeing a bow of this type of shape on the market and other than that um, shout out to the push to my coach Alex Melnick thanks Alex for cleaning all that stuff up <laughs> you find me on woodsmithfinest.com with all of my spoons my card stuff and my entire tool line from axes all the way to hook knives um, you find me on Instagram of course on the woodsman's finest um, and on Boon TV where you we have currently about 58 hours, 56, 58 hours of course material about sharpening, decoration, spoon carving, cooks a carving, um, tool use, all the good stuff. So find me there on Boon TV as well. All the links are down below. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys are safe. Um, go outside, get drawing a bow, and I'm going to catch you next time. Cheers.